So for now, I'm going to connect to the drive using CCW. So if you hit discover, there's a couple ways to connect to the drive. I've, I'm talking to it via Ethernet, but here's also a link to my Anaconda. I don't know if anybody's used the DSI port or the, excuse, excuse me, the 1203 USB uh, serial adapter we use to talk to all of our drives, but the 520s, the 4s, the 70s, the 750s, 700, 755s, 753s, all those drives come with uh, either the DSI port or a DPI port. And that 1203 USB comes with both types of connections. So if you don't have any kind of network or don't have an uh, Ethernet network to talk to it, you would use that to connect to it. But Ethernet's so much faster. So that's why I'm using it today. Um, this is my IP address for my drive, so I'm simply connected to it. This is what I'm using, Connected Components Workbench Software version 12. It came out last year, uh, three, around March of last year, so it's about a year old. All you have to do is go to ab.com, and in their search field, just search for Connected Components Workbench, and it's a free download. So, so I'm going to hit add the project so i'm adding my drive to the project at this point i'm not going to go through the parameters i want to go through a wizard the basic startup wizard which is the startup that i showed you if you wanted to use the keypad or if you had to use the keypad so you notice there's a couple other wizards here too we're going to review that review one of those towards the very end but i'm going to start <clears throat> hopefully i got my encoder cable connected properly this time with this wizard so i'm going to reset defaults so obviously the drive's gonna fault when I do that and everything's good. I'm gonna leave the language uh, English. I'm gonna leave it for senseless vector. I know my motor data. So my motor here, I, here's the motor overload current and the motor nameplate current. I usually make them both the same and we'll discuss that here in a, when we go through the parameters. It's a four pole motor and it's very important that you put the correct amount of poles for the motor, if it's a two pole, four pole, six pole. And again, John and I will talk about this next week at the drive basic and motor basic seminar. My nameplate RPM is 1600 RPM and my nameplate power is 0.025. Now this is gonna round it up to 0.03. So my motor nameplate's in there. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and add my feedback device because uh, I have an encoder on here. I'm gonna use it for my position lab. But notice I left the drive and senseless vector control. So it's not really using the encoder for speed regulation at this point. It's, it's, it's still in senseless vector. Uh, I'm going to leave the dynamic brake resistor disabled. You can, you can use one of our standard Rockwell brake resistors that is also in the manual if you need a braking resistor. If you use the ones that are in the manual for the, for the drives, if you have the drive partner and it tells you what resistor to use, these braking resistors are only 5% duty cycle rated, but, but quite a bit, I think they're like 100% torque. So they're pretty powerful, can give you some stop and torque, but, but not very often. Or you can just connect your own resistor and put no protection. Uh, and if you do that, be cautious that we will really ask that there's a thermostat on that resistor and you have some means to, to at best, hopefully kill power to the drive if that thermostat opens up or if you know what duty cycle resistor you have you can obviously put that here as well i'm going to leave stop mode at ramp to stop the drive's faulted because i reset defaults i'm faulted right now in a fo48 so i'm going to clear the fault and i'm just going to do a direction test with using the jog so here notice my encoder speed so my direction is is correct so yes now, here's where we go to tuning. Some people just completely skip, skip this step because they have the motor wired to the machine. Uh, and, and if you want to do a tune, you want to do a rotate tune, we ask that the motor not be connected to the uh, load. It's got to be uncoupled. If you don't, if you do have it connected, you could at least do a static tune. The static tune goes out and looks at the, basically the voltage drop across the winding. That's really all it does but it, it will help with speed regulation and um, because it compensates for that voltage drop. But I'm gonna do a full blown rotate tune. 
This will take a minute to go through. So the rotate tune does both a static tune and a rotate tune. And like I said, the static tune does the IR voltage drop across the windings. The rotate tune does a basically a flux current tune as well and some other stuff, but th those are the two key parts of it. The flux current is how much current it, it takes to, to flux up that motor because it is an induction motor. There's a certain amount of current that, that needs to be present for that motor to rotate. So that's what that is. If this were a permanent magnet motor, that number would be really low. Permanent magnet motors, because they're already basically fluxed up because they have the magnets already in them, um, they require a lot less current to make them run. And I mean, it's, it's basically insignificant. I've got a customer and a couple of people on this call may know them. I've got a couple of customers that uses some, some 250 horsepower permanent magnet motors. And, and when, when we're uncoupled, we're only pulling about eight amps on a 250 horsepower motor. So the, the, the auto tune rotated, everything's good. So we're, we're good there. Uh, for my, Max frequency, min frequency, I can set it up here. I can disable reverse uh, operation here. Um, I'm just gonna leave it enabled. I can define my accel and decel times here. I'm just gonna keep it half a second because I don't have any load. I should be able to accelerate really fast without any problems. And there's, since there's no load, it's not gonna cause any mechanical stress on anything. I wanna talk about S-curve here. This is, <clears throat> This is a pretty neat feature. It's used quite often in the servo world, but I'm just gonna add say 50% S-curve. So what 50% S-curve does, if you see where it kind of rounds off the start and the stop, I'm gonna remove it. What happens here is there's a sudden move and here's a sudden basically stop. And the S-curve really helps mechanically. It helps a lot with the mechanical wear and tear on belts, pulleys, uh, you know, chains, that kind of stuff. So what it does is by adding 50%, I've now added 50% to my Axel and D-cell time. It's not populating here in this wizard, but it actually should add 50% of 0.5 and it should stay 0.75 now. If I were to add a hundred percent S curve, it would make now because I'm adding a hundred percent to my defined D cell and X cell, it would make it a, a one second X cell and D cell. My application, I don't have any gearboxes, nothing mechanical, so I'm going to put it back to zero. I just thought that was worth mentioning, and, and it's it's really not not used very often. I think it should be used more often than it is. So here's where you can, uh, this is again, this is a 525, and here's where you can select your speed control. I'm gonna use it as a drive pot right now. There's a, that onboard potentiometer on the keypad. I will make note that there's three different speed references here. They cannot be the same. If I take uh, and put ethernet IP here, you see a caution. Check other speed references. No two speed references can have the same value. So if you change this to Ethernet, which is what quite a few people are doing, obviously, these days, Ethernet, then you'll need to change speed reference three to something to say drive pot. Since I'm not on a network, I'm going to take it back to defaults. And it didn't notice it didn't reset my communication parameters when I did a, a full reset, which is a good thing. By default, the drive is set up for boot P so that ADC will work. We were, we were talking about auto device configuration later. If, if, if it were not set up for boot P DHCP, obviously it wouldn't allow a forced IP address from, uh, from the static, static switch. So here's a good look, and that's why I like this wizard. Here's a really good look at your terminals. This actually shows you the terminals and what, what they're defined for. So it's pretty cool and notice also that there's preset frequencies over here and there's 15 capable you're, it's capable of 15 preset frequencies as well and you can you can define those here pretty easily rather than having to go to individual parameters and notice that there are, there really isn't a parameter associated in this wizard if you look back nothing's nothing's given me a parameter number but we are changing those parameters that were in that quick start guide Here's the relay outputs. 
and the opto outputs and the analog outputs. So I'm done, I'm finished.